Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we have an 05 Hyundai Tucson. Customer complaint, the battery is dead. Uh, they suspect the alternator, the battery light is on. All we've done, we pulled it into the shop and the battery light was on. We had to jump start it. As soon as we took the jump pack off, it quit running. So kind of a good indication the alternator is not doing anything. So kind of walk you through the steps on how to troubleshoot this charging system. It's a very simple system. Uh, we'll look at a wiring diagram and get going on it. Okay, first things first, we haven't done anything, anything to the vehicle uh, besides hooking up a battery charger and cooking the battery for a while so that we can start it and test it. Um, the very first thing you do in a no charge situation is hook up your, see what your battery, what your battery voltage is while the engine's running. So we got the meter hooked up, negative to negative, positive to positive. You can see our battery voltage right now is sitting at 12.68. We just had it charging, I just turned it off. So let's see if we can get you somewhere where you can see that. We'll fire it up and see what our battery voltage does. Okay, we'll reach inside, fire this thing up and see what our charging voltage looks like. Well, I would say the alternator is not charging. As you see, I just gave it a second. Sometimes after you crank, battery voltage can drop and then the voltage regulator turns on and it'll kick it back up to charging voltage. But as we can see here, it's not doing anything. So let's do the shutdown. Okay, so I figured I would use my amazing artistical abilities. Artistic, artistical, that's a new word. Use my drawn skills and kind of draw out the diagram of how this charging circuit works. Um, it's really simple, this style of charging system. It's kind of the old school way of doing it because it does not use computer control to control the alternator. Um, newer vehicles on this field terminal of an alternator, the engine computer will send like a square wave or a, a pulse width modulated signal to the alternator to tell it to charge, you know, charge 10%, charge 20, charge 50, charge 100, whatever. This style doesn't do that. It uses battery positive to, uh, the voltage regulator in the alternator uses battery, po battery, <laughs> goodness. I'm gonna explain the setup here. So we have our battery, we have our little fancy voltmeter, we have our alternator. And this is really, this is basically how the diagram looks, just a little more classy on the actual printed out wiring diagram. Let's start at our battery. We have a negative post, obviously, that just goes to ground. It goes to a frame ground or wherever it grounds, most likely the frame. We have the positive post. And there, it sends a large positive battery cable from the battery to the B plus post of the alternator. This is the, like the charge line, this is, the wire the alternator actually charges through, sends current through to charge the battery. The F terminal of the alternator, or the field terminal, also comes from the battery. This one actually goes through a fuse. Actually, they both do technically. Goes through a fuse to the F terminal of the alternator. So, the first test that we did is we wanted to verify the complaint. Is the alternator actually charging? So, took our voltmeter, went positive, negative, and we had 12.5 volts right at the battery. The next step to do is, there's a couple ways you could go about it. The concern is voltage drop. If you had bad connections, bad wires, bad grounds, that bad connection, that high resistance will eat up your voltage before it gets to the battery. So one way you can do voltage drop, the normal way you do voltage drop is you, you check positive to positive, just like this. And what you should see is nothing. A voltage meter reads difference in voltage. Positive to positive, there should be no difference. You should get close to zero, maybe a tenth of a volt, maybe two tenths of a volt, maybe. That's, I mean, that, even that's a little bit high. We should see nothing. Then you would do the same on the ground side. You go ground case of the alternator, because that is the ground, to the ground on the battery. You should see nothing. What I'm gonna do, we check the battery. We know that our battery is 12.5, whatever. We're gonna go to the alternator and we are gonna check battery positive at the alternator on the stud of the alternator. And we're gonna check the case ground. 
and see what our reading is. If our reading at the alternator is the exact same as the reading at the battery, we've essentially checked both sides for a voltage drop. If we have the same reading at the alternator as we do at the battery, we know that our wiring between the two, as far as is main battery feed and ground, are good. They're, they're not a concern. Now, if we were to see a difference, say we're at 12.5 here, and we saw 11.5 at the alternator, then we would break it down. We have a voltage drop obviously between the two, now we need to know where it is. So then we would check the positive side like this, and then we would check the negative side. And one of those should show that one volt difference. So we're gonna check that. If that tests good, we're not concerned about a voltage drop. The last test to do is the field terminal. And obviously, as you can see from the diagram, we should see 12 volts at the field terminal. We should see battery voltage. I'll say that, not 12 volts. It should be 12, but it's not going to be because this battery is a little low. So. Check field terminal, super simple. Hook straight to the battery with your negative lead. Hook to the red wire. This is a red wire on this one on the field terminal. See if you have battery voltage. If you do, this alternator is seeing everything that it needs to see to charge and it is still not charging. The alternator is faulty. And da, da, da. Yeah, that's it. So we're gonna hop onto the car and give that a shot. Okay, so right now we were hooked straight to the battery with both leads, positive and negative. We're unplugging stuff. This is amateur hour. Turn this. Start this meter. So hooked to the battery, you can see we're sitting at 12.32 volts. Okay. Now we're gonna move both leads to the alternator. We're gonna do positive to the positive post in the alternator. The negative will hook to the case ground. Get in here without hitting the belt. Okay. Try to show you this. As you can see, 12.29. We are straight on the alternator with negative and positive leads in the meter. It's dropping, obviously, because the alternator is not charging, so battery voltage is dropping. So, let me shut off. Okay, so again, the ground lead is still in the negative of the battery. We've moved our positive lead, so I'm gonna get you down there and show you, to the red wire, uh, field wire, whatever you wanna call it. That red wire right there, I used a piercing probe on it because I couldn't get into the connector well enough to guarantee a good connection. So we're pierced into that, and what we expect to see, if we look back at our diagram, this red wire right here, what we expect to see there, if we follow it up, fuse straight to the battery, we expect to see battery voltage. So now let's fire it up one more time. See what we got on the field wire. And we pretty much have the exact same results. We have our battery voltage at the red wire and she's still not charging. Okay, so what does that tell us? It tells us the alternator is bad, regardless, the alternator is faulty. Um, it's kind of a roundabout way of doing it. I know that a lot of people would start, they would check your battery voltage while the engine's running. If it's low, the first thing they would do is check battery voltage or positive side voltage drop and then negative side voltage drop and you're good. But the way that I see it is if you have the same voltage at each source, there's obviously no bat, no voltage drop, so there's no reason to check either side. We, we kind of checked both right there. And we checked the field terminal. We have battery voltage there too. So that's it, needs an alternator. We'll, uh, we'll get one slapped in this thing and redo our tests at the end, see what we got. Okay, so we got the new alternator installed. Everything's hooked up, ready to go. So we're hooked back up to the battery, just 
Uh, positive lead on the meter to the positive battery, negative lead to the negative side of the battery. So our resting battery voltage, and I just took it off the charger, and my leads are falling off. Okay, so we can see that 12.7, 12.7 we'll call it. So we'll fire this thing up and we'll see what we come to. All right, get you a better shot on the meter. I would expect it to hit 13 or above. Beautiful. We're running at 14.29 by 14.3 volts, which is good. Exactly what we wanted to see. That is a functioning alternator. We'll let it run for a minute. Just to make sure our new alternator continues to function. You never know with reman components. All right, guys, well, you saw it. Charging about 14.3 right now. Um, I'm gonna let this run outside for 15, 20 minutes. Let it get hot, I'll throw some loads on and make sure the alternator can produce what is required of it. Um, and we'll be done, ship this thing out the door. So I know that was a long roundabout way of testing an alternator that doesn't work. Most shops, most people, we check their battery, it's not charging, they put an alternator on it. And nine times out of 10, you're probably gonna be right. But I have seen it before where a dirty battery connection caused it, a broken field wire will cause it. You know, I've seen belts fall off. You don't just throw parts of stuff, you gotta test it. So we tested it, we proved it, good to go. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.